You are always ready to go, aren't you? I am impressed. Look who's up and ready. Good morning, Mira, good morning. You excited to have a great day? Give it to me. <laughs> I'm not getting out of my tent. Drop it in my hand and we're not playing. It's really nice to wake up to the sound of the birds. And, you know, I like camping alone in nature. I like my alone time. But it sure is fun waking up to a playful dog and my friend John. <laughs> this is so cool. I kind of forgot through the night, like, oh yeah, I'm not alone today. <laughs> Mira made me feel right away that I was not alone this morning waking me up. She's a good alarm clock. Okay. <sighs> Buenos dias, John. Buenos dias, Ryan. How you doing, bud? Bien, gracias. ¿Y tú? Oh, wow. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we met in Mexico. <laughs> We got to see speaking the Spanish, and you're from you know an area that looks kind of like this, right? You're just from the Canmore, Banff area. Yeah, Canmore, Banff, Calgary. It's sort of a lot like Montana. It shares a lot of the geology, and uh, and the people too. The, the the culture is very similar. Yeah, yeah, it's it's good. And how have the Americans been treating you, Canadian, Canadian man? Oh, uh, it's it's been awesome. I meet so many. Friendly people, interesting people, yeah, you, you uh, yeah, the American, <laughs> you Americans are very friendly, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, we do like our guns. You do like the guns. You hear the guns going off in the, in the, uh, in the bushes from time to time. <laughs> By the way, I don't have a gun. People ask me a lot if I travel with a gun for protection. No, I don't travel with a gun. Dude, Just bear spray. You don't even have a stove. <laughs> <laughs> True, I don't have a stove, I don't have a gun. Our birds' heads are falling off. Yeah. We got the team back together again. No crashies. No flatties. No whammies. Woohoo! Let's do it, Mira. Look at her go, look at her go. <laughs> I'm having a hard time keeping up with Mira. Ah, oh, it feels good to be riding with my Baja buddies again. It's good to be hanging with you guys again. <laughs> ah, here we are riding bikes. It's like, it's like we've just been doing this continually since January. Yeah. You have been. Yeah, that's I right. I took like a four month break. Yeah, but you've been doing other stuff. That's true. So go on, lead the way. I won't be far behind. John might be pedaling with the dog, and you might think that that would make you slower, but it doesn't make John slower. That dude can hammer on a bicycle. We are 
are now rolling into the tiny town of Ovando, Montana. Population about 50, dogs over 100. Look at this cute little town. I really love small town America. It's one of my favorite things about riding bikes in the middle of nowhere is exploring little places like this. You know, this is the whole town right here. Not a whole lot to it, but it just has a charm to it that puts a smile on my face for sure. This is really neat. They are all set and ready for cyclists. They have charging stations, they have a bathroom, they have Wi-Fi. <laughs> they let you camp out here for no cost. I like towns like this that embrace bike tourism. Thank you, Ovando. I'm not exactly sure what this is, but check it out. You can go into this little tiny house. This may have been the world's first RV. Look at that, it even has a stove, full on stove in here. Huh. You can sleep up here. Got your nice oil lamp. Wow. <laughs> this is really cool. They rent out this teepee for $5 a night and it comes with cots and books and even bug spray. And for evening entertainment, there is a horseshoe thing. What do you call them? Pitch field. And this is the jail that I've heard about. You can actually stay in this jail. How cool is that? <laughs> wow. And this jail is from 1890. Fascinating that they've put up so much infrastructure for bike tourists. And it looks like a pretty informal setup. You don't even really have to check in with somebody. You write your name on a list and, and put $5 in the can. Okay, that's enough touristing around the metropolis of Ovando. I've got a plate of pancakes waiting for me over here at the Stray Bullet. John's already eaten and uh, it's, I can't wait. I love pancakes. Look at that stack of pancakes. Is that Canadian bacon? Mm, no. <laughs> no. But it'll do. So it seems like Ovando really embraces cyclists. I'm seeing all the teepees and the jail and everything. We love the cyclists. Yeah. We miss them. They're good for business and they spend a ton of money people. Yeah. And so how many on a normal day come through here? Oh, probably at least 25 to 30. Really? Yeah. Awesome. Wow. And they sleep in these little places yep. and then they come and buy food from Pitch you. There. I've had, during the race, I've had people sleeping on my porch when I get here. So <laughs> it's awesome. And what's it been like this year? Terrible. 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 Usually there's 20 or so bikes in town in the morning and now there's maybe one or two a week. Yeah. It is that hard for you guys? Do you expect it's, you need that money? We need that money. You need we're, that. we're missing it big time. Yeah, it's a big hit. There's probably 1,200 cyclists that come through. You know, what is there, 250 with the race? Wow. And just independently throughout the year, people wow. doing it. So that's a big hit. That is a big hit. Um, so I've gotten a little bit of flack for doing this. People are like, oh, you shouldn't be traveling during COVID. These small towns don't want you. What do you say to that? I say that's ridiculous. We welcome you with open arms, and there's no cleaner way to be out, right? Yeah. You're out in the wilderness and exercising, and it's, you know, we love it. At least Dovando loves it. You need to come back here next year <laughs> when things are open and right. buy lots of pancakes. Right? Yeah. Pancakes are a big hit. Thank you so much. Have a good one. We'll see you next year. Good luck. We'll bring the, bring the cyclist back. This was a great, great stop. Got refueled with some pancakes, got to meet a nice local, and uh, I definitely want to come back here and sleep in the jail. Right? Right there, John? <laughs> Do you want to sleep in a jail? Do you want to sleep in a jail? Yeah, you want to sleep in the jail, don't you? enjoying this ranch land for sure and all these puffy clouds up in the sky the road we're on is like your quintessential wild west american road fence along the side 
golden fields of grass flowing in the wind. We are now heading up Huckleberry Pass and all these ATVs and Jeeps are dusting us out. So I'm wearing my mask again. Open wide, the future's on our side. We'll touch the stars, we'll follow our hearts into the light. You know what makes it easier to climb a steep hill? Having a dog running beside you. How many miles a day do you think she runs? Well, on any given day, I try and keep it below 12 miles a day, but if it's heavily single track, then it could be as many as 20. So uh, at this point, she's a super fit dog. And I just keep track of how her paws are doing and you know what her energy levels are like before and after the ride, and then just adjust accordingly. So sometimes I'll choose a little bit different route or keep her in the box longer than I normally would just to let her rest. Yeah. How about you? When do you rest? <laughs> every mile, every mile on my mind leads to you. It leads to you. Every mile, every mile on my path leads to you. I love my mirror hugs in the middle of a big steep hill. Good to see you, bud. You're doing great. So while we were there enjoying our ice cream, these two young dudes came up to us and said, no way, you're riding the Great Divide. Cool, you wanna camp in my yard? You can take a shower at my house too. All right, these are our new friends. What's up, guys? Devin. Devin, Tyson. Tyson. Tyson, it's his birthday today. It's 33. Woo! 33. Nice to meet you guys. So you invite other riders to your house, huh? Yeah, and Continental Divide hikers and stuff. That's so cool. I don't know. It's just a house. And why do you like hosting hosting us people? Because I love tra I, I love traveling personally. Yeah. And then if I can't travel, then you bring the travelers, you know, the travelers hang out. Yeah, right? and there's the world right there. So. Yeah, it's all messy. Last year, uh, me and Tyson spent... So I grew um, up 50 days in Southeast Asia. I'm happy to help. Honestly. Yeah, it means a lot, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Are you so happy? Rolling around in the grass? <laughs> uh. We only have pine cones today, but you want it? There you go. These pine cones are better, they're safer. So John, you've been on the road pretty much for a year riding your bike all over the place. How's your body feeling after biking every single day? Feels great. <laughs> <laughs> You're like Mira, you need to be run every day. Yeah, it agrees. Yeah, I mean, you see different things every day. Uh, you're getting exercise every day. I mean, what's not to love about it? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and it's probably anywhere from five to eight hours every day which right. sounds like a lot but you adapt yeah yeah no, it's what's been, been your favorite part of your of all your journeys i guess it's two things one is the the people that i meet and those the, those people their reaction to mira yeah that's been the fun part you, like you know you're just a cyclist riding through and then they notice the dog on the back of the bike or they or she's running beside me and uh, their eyes light up. So there's dog lovers or there's cyclists and they just find that curious. And, and uh, yeah, though that part's been, <laughs> been terrific. Yeah. And so <laughs> you're, can... you're Canadian, you've traveled a lot in America now. What are some of the differences you've seen? Yeah, so the, so I guess, let me start out first by the, uh, the similarities. So mm -hmm. it's obviously the same language. Uh, we call our currency the same thing. Um, there's a shared history, all the all those parts, um, but there are definitely some differences. Uh, the first thing you notice when you come across the border are the no trespassing signs. Mm. That's something that we don't see nearly as much in Canada. There's the odd one, 
but I think it has to do with the liability of the owner. So there's those kind of things. And that can be frustrating if you're trying to find a route through a, a place and you want to stay on dirt. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I respect that. And then uh, the number of gunshots that I hear in the forest, <laughs> that's a big difference. Yeah. Or the amount of brass that I see at a, you know, on a, on a logging spur road or those kind of things. You mean bullet casings? Yeah, exactly. Bullet casings for uh, pistols or rifles or <laughs> shotguns, those yeah. kind of things. Um, and that's, you know, that, I sort of knew that. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing that's, uh, that's similar and the thing that I really appreciate about Americans, uh, at least in my experience, is the warmth of the individuals. So, you know, we're, we're in a little town here in, in uh, I guess we're still in northern Montana, and, you know, we're just two dusty cyclists sitting down on a sidewalk beside a gas station eating ice cream, and a local fellow offers us hospitality of uh, showers and laundry and, uh, and a spot to pitch our tents uh, and charge our, our, our items. So that kind of stuff is really amazing. Or the rancher in Wyoming, when we were starting out, and we are going through the winter time, there was a winter storm. He came out of his ranch property, saw the only tracks on the road were a bicycle and dog mm -hmm. prints beside it. He turned the opposite way from town to check on us, to see yeah. if we were lost or to see if we were okay. And then in the same piece of road, the sheriff's deputy came by to check on us offered us a ride to the to the county which is also the state line in that case yeah. so that that warmth and that that um, generosity of, of people in the US um, it's maybe not different than Canada but it's it's been my impression yeah of the US and the, the news aside uh, yeah let's talk about that so if you watch the news in the United States it paints kind of a, uh, a scary picture a dark picture a very dark picture yeah what and do you say to that? <laughs> uh, okay, so s there are obviously great truths in that news coverage. We're seeing things, you can see things with your own eyes without the interpretation of a third party, of some commentator. And those things are deeply troubling on a, on a human level. Um, and angering. Um, the, a lot of emotions come out of those. Rage is sometimes one of them, an impotent rage. It's not my country to, to do or to say anything other than give my opinion when asked for possibly. Um, and then now with COVID too, the numbers around that are, are and, the, and the trending is really concerning as a traveler through here. But not all the country is the same. Yeah. And, and yeah, my experience is only my experience and my interaction with people, whether they have a different skin color than myself or the same skin color is all that I can sort of work with. But that news coverage is, 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 a, is a, you know, it's a, it's a snippet of the US, just like what we see in Mexico. The Mexican people are wonderful and warm, and the countryside feels very safe. But there are extremely violent crimes that occur there. There's no doubt about that. So, um, I guess the question is, what, what do I think about the news coverage? Yeah, there's a lot of pain yet to come. And the positive in that is that it's being dealt with. There's more pain to go through in that history than has been than you've passed already so like this is just the start of it in my opinion and and in a positive light i'm seeing canadians look at our history uh through you know taking that opportunity so i think that this trend and obvious and often the u.s is a trend-setting nation and i think that that looking at how how we treat other individuals that we class rightly or wrongly in different groups and trying to to create a structure where those are a fair and honest and um, and loving uh, interactions I, th I think is a positive thing we're seeing that around the world 
So my hope is that that American leadership and people uh, take this opportunity to to evaluate and heal and and address the wrongs that have happened and know that you will be a better nation and a better world like the the US can be that essential leadership country mm-hmm. by by taking that path as opposed to the strong resistance and and state sponsored violence that's you know everyone is hoping for a, a good resolution what do you think about traveling in the United States? Last time I saw you was Mexico. It's pretty good. <laughs> Mira is using a Jedi mind trick right now. And she's like, you will throw me this pine cone if I wait long enough and I look cute enough. Is that right? She gives me this look all day and she kind of stares at me. She's like, are you going to throw a stick or a pine cone? Because I'd really like you to. All right, you've waited long enough. Okay. Thank you.